hello, 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 my friends. Once again, welcome back down the old rabbit hole. It's your Uncle Icarus. That's four to the eight to the motherfucking O, yo. And I'm back once again with some new stories of psychedelic past for you guys. Now, first and foremost, before I get into uh, what we have in class for today, I want to first and foremost say thank you all so much for your love, your support, your patience. I can... I can't even begin to explain what it fucking means to me, man. And uh, a lot of people also are wondering, man, hey, you did this whole theatrical announcement for your multi-part story time series, Welcome to the Res. So let me talk about that for a sec. That's definitely still going down. I've been working on it. I've actually been working on it a lot. I've come across two major problems with that video, though, is number one, I absolutely fucking hate the structure of the story as it is currently in place. It's a really long, very detailed story to tell and trying to get past all the fat of the meat. Does that make sense? It's becoming insanely difficult. On top of that, dude, I just get way too damn emotional telling that story because it involves Dylan, rest in peace, my boy, long live Dylan Porter. Uh, it involves my pops, and uh, it involves like very, very prevalent moments in my life from both my fucking heroes, man, who are no longer here. So like, I can't go through the story without crying like a little bitch. <laughs> so <coughs> I don't want a complete fucking sob fest or anything throughout the video. So I'm currently working on it, but have no fear for it will be here. Uh, but for now, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, so good to see you. You look beautiful, by the way. You've lost the weight. Um, I'm going to tell you guys two different fucking stories. Um, so the first one is a long time ago tale that I've probably told on some live streams, but it definitely, especially now in this day and age, deserves a spot on my channel for very obvious reasons that you'll find out here shortly. The second is the meat and fucking potatoes of this channel, which is a DMT trip report. And I haven't had a DMT experience in a quite some time in between when this took place, if that makes sense. Sorry, guys. I'm a little, my bearings are rusty on trying to explain things. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to pre uh, preface this uh, story time series with a public service announcement, I guess you could say. This story takes place, I want to say, what, this is 2016? Years ago, man. Years ago. Um, but the moral behind this story still fucking stands today, probably now more than fucking ever. So the most important message I can tell you of this experience is this. Listen closely. Come here. Test your fucking drugs. Test them. Test them. Fucking test them. I don't care how trusted somebody is, man. There's some wild shit going on nowadays more than ever, as opposed to when this story is telling you. But this story is about the time I totally fucking almost died, from my understanding, on fake drugs. So, into the old psychedelic time machine we go, lo, 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 smoke DMT. So, I want to say this was probably 2015 or 2016. I was still uh, with the mother of my child, Damn it, Jess, uh, the mother of my firstborn child. We were living in this apartment in Tempe, right? Now, this apartment is where I first smoked DMT. Like, a bunch of really cool shit happened here. But nonetheless, at the time when I first got into psychedelic drugs, um, it was off a uh, whim like i i had no connections i was involved in the hardcore scene like i didn't know hippie life raver life i had no connections of anything lsd just happened to find itself to me you know like i'm fucking 
the psychedelic life was painted in my soul like a fucking Bob Ross painting or some shit. Like it just happened magically, right? No happen, no accidents, only happy fucking mistakes or whatever the fuck Bob Ross says. I couldn't find LSD. So I did what is probably the stupidest fucking thing to do. But hey, we all fucking did it, you know, like jacking off in the backseat of your mom's fucking station wagon. We all did it, bro. <laughs> I would just ask random fucking people, hey, do you know where I can get acid? Do you know where I can get acid? Do you know where I can get acid? And uh, probably cost me, I want to say, about a good three, $400 in uh, rip-offs. But this one is the rip-off of all fucking rip-offs, bro. It was summertime. I remember that. We were on a search, you know, kid-free. We had the house to ourselves. I was hitting my boy P-Fresh up. Shout out to my boy P-Fresh. Now, P-Fresh and his cousin Bones, you guys may recognize him from my first LSD experience video he was the guy who first got me acid so if i was ever on the hunt for the molecule i would find him he would be the first person i ask hey man you have any like tips on in the l or anything like that and finally one day he says hey like my homies 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 cousins baby's mama homie hit me up and says he has lsd me and p fresh are on the way to your house right now like, we got some tabs, maybe like four tabs, tab for me, Bones, P Fresh, and my baby's mom. Fuck yeah. I'm like, where are you guys at? They're like, yo, we're turning the corner right now. We'll be there in five minutes. I am 20 minutes away on my bicycle. So I'm about to Albert Hoffman that bitch all the way back motherfucking home. So I'm fucking It's like trying to get home like yeah I'm gonna trip motherfucking balls So it's fucking humid sweaty night I'm fucking I get home I'm like a half out of breath chug a fucking gallon of water Homies are there chilling right so I'm like hell yeah like he's like yo check out these tabs they're fire right So he pulls them out of the bag and hands me the four strip I am sweating. My palms are sweaty. Me, whose weak arms are heavy, bruh. So, I grab the tabs and I put them in my fucking hand. And I'm like looking at it like, wow, that's cool. And I give it back to him. So we're all gonna drop acid, but now, where I was living at the time, uh, we didn't have our internet set up yet. So we had like no Wi-Fi, which is kind of gay, right? So I was like, hey, no big deal, you know. I'm gonna run down to my homie Dean's house. Dude, dope dude, shout out to Dean Kilpatrick. Um, I was gonna go use his Wi-Fi and I was gonna download like four, like three hour long, like trippy psychedelic videos that we could all just like play music to and fucking put on the TV and watch and trip fucking nuts. So I'm like, all right guys, don't take the acid, I'll be back. So then I hop on my bicycle and I ride to Dean's house, which isn't far at all. It's probably no joke, like seven minutes on the bicycle, just right down one block, one major block. So I get to his house, knock on the door. They lived in a studio apartment. There was like six dudes living in this fucking studio apartment. Like no joke. These dudes were like homies, homies. Like they would throw parties at the studio apartment. There'd be like fucking 20 people in this bitch. And then fucking like, they would all bang chicks there. Like they had this tiny ass fucking bathroom and it was like the sex dungeon. Like if someone's in the bathroom, don't go in there because someone's getting piped. So I show up to this house and of course there's like fucking six, seven people and they're all smoking weed and everything. I'm like, what's up y'all? We gonna drop some L. They're like, that's what's up. You got any more? I was like, unfortunately I don't, but hey, is it cool if I download you know, these fucking videos because, you know, we need some eye candy. He's like, yeah, it's all good. So I get down there. I start, like, you know, downloading shit. We're all just talking and chilling. They're all hitting the, from the fucking zong. And they're like, hey, man, you want to smoke some pot? I'm like, come on, man. I'm the long-haired beanie guy. Of course I want to smoke some fucking pot. So he's like, all right, man. So I hit the bowl, and I'm just watching this shit download, you know, fucking 50%, turns to 60, turns to 70, start downloading the other video, all that shit. Now, my friends, this is where shit hits the motherfucking fan. 
I'm high, stoned, whatever. Then, fucking out of nowhere, dude, like, I just feel, like, I just feel off. Like, I feel dizzy. Like, I feel like I've just fucking played Ring Around the Rosie for, like, two minutes. Like, I just start getting all woozy, man. And, uh... I start getting really hot. Like, my body temperature rises, like, through the motherfucking roof, baby. And I feel like, I feel like sweat just start beating out of me. And I'm, like, so dizzy. I'm so hot. And I just, like, I set the laptop down. And I looked at these guys, and I was like, hey, man, can I get some water? And that's my version of the story. Because I looked at them, and I guess I went, hey, guys. Can I can and then blah, 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 fall on the ground. Now, coming back to my point of view, I just remember being like, Can I get some water? And it's like someone like God pulled my soul out and then put it back in. Because I came back to and my whole body was fucking vibrating. And I'm like I'm like having like a psychotic episode. I, I, I just remember seeing black and it looks like you, you ever gotten hit in the face like when your eyes are closed and you just see like a blast of colors like it was like that like boom and I was on the ground and somebody was restraining me it was Dean he was restraining me and I was just like yelling cussing like get the fuck off me get the fuck off me and he was like yo calm the fuck down dude calm down and I was like what happened what the fuck is happening? And he was like, dude, you just had a fucking seizure, bro. Calm the fuck down. And everyone's like freaking the fuck out. And I was like, I just had a seizure. I was like, bro. Like, I didn't even take the acid. He was like, well, you just seized out, man. And I was like, fuck. And I was like sitting there drinking water. Everyone's like, I as fuck. Like, what the fuck is going on? So I'm like, dude, I got to get home. Like, I, like, it has to be fake acid. I got to get home. So I like I was like, dude, I, I got to get out of here. Like, are you sure you're okay to leave? I'm like, yeah. I opened the door to walk out into the night. And like when I walked into the darkness of night, even though I'm in an apartment complex with tons of spotlights or spotlights, street lights and, you know, fucking hallway lights or whatever. When I step out into the darkness of night, I can't see. I cannot fucking see. Like I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. So I tell the boys, I'm like, yo, you got to get me home. And they're like, yeah, no, it's okay. They gave me a ride home. We were there in three minutes. So we get back to my house and I open the door and I'm just, I'm fucking done, dude. I just immediately fall on the couch and uh, everyone's like, what the fuck happened to him? And he was like, yo, so he came over and he had a fucking seizure. And they're like, what? And they were like, yeah, we are all fucking freaked out. Like, I don't know if you need to take him to the hospital or anything. I was like, fuck that. I ain't got insurance. Which don't matter because I'm native. But I was like, I'm not trying to go to fucking fuck that shit. I'm not trying to go to the hospital. So they're like, all right, everything's good. They leave. And I'm like, please tell me you guys didn't take that acid. They're like, yo, we dropped it like 30 minutes ago. And I was like, you fucking serious? And they were like, yeah, it tastes like shit. And I was like, why'd you, why'd you eat it? He's like, it's acid, man. I was like, if it's bitter, it's a spitter. That's a rule for all of you guys out there. If it is bitter, it's a spitter. Get the fuck away from that shit. So it turned out to be 25i. I know this now because I had later taken 25i with P-Fresh. I didn't seize out that time, but he was like, this tastes exactly like the shit. I'm pretty sure it was 25 fucking i. Now, the rest of the night was pretty fucked up because they were tripping balls. I was just spaced out. But they were tripping and they were terrified at any second that they were going to fucking keel over and die because they're like, what the fuck did we just take? Still like a wild night. Um, but nonetheless, man, that goes without saying, man. Test your fucking shit, dude. Test your shit. They're putting fentanyl in anything nowadays, bro. Back in the day, man, we used to have to worry about 2CI, 25I, N-bombs, all that shit. Now you gotta worry about fucking fentanyl. 
Fucking stupid. Test your shit. Uh, this isn't a sponsored video or anything. I don't, I'm not working with anyone to try to get you to buy test kits or anything. I'm just telling you to be smart and fucking buy test kits, bro. But hope you guys enjoyed that one. Um, yeah, I, this actually went on a lot longer than I thought it would be. But fuck it. As promised, I'm going to tell you guys about the last time I smoked a DMT. And to our psychedelic time machine, where you go. Woo, 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 woo. Eat my ass and smoke DMT. So, this happened about a month ago, man. Now, uh, I'm with a wonderful lady named uh, Starlight. And this is like at the first probably like month, month and a half of dating. I've known her for a while, but you know, dating wise. Uh, we get a hold of NN dimethyl motherfucking tryptamine, son. And we got in the conversation about smoking it, of course. And I was like, yeah, uh, she, she was explaining to me, I've only smoked DMT once. And I was like, how was it? She was like, you know, it was, it was pretty crazy. I, it was cool. You know, like I felt, you know, I just felt spaced out. And, you know, I, I saw like some tracers and like a couple like, you know, some everything was kind of like linear. It was all right. It was all right. It was all right. Girl. You don't understand. DMT is the epitome of the psychedelic experience. When you have a real DMT experience, there's no, it was all right. You know you smoked DMT when you say, I have no fucking way to explain that other than that was the craziest experience of my life. DMT is the holy grail of psychedelic drugs. It has followed us for thousands, if not tens of thousands of years. It and its properties of itself may be the sole reason that we have religion. So no. You crazy ass! I have to ask you, how did you smoke DMT? I said, oh, we put it on a on a glass and uh, we used a nectar collector to smoke it. And I said, oh! we are getting in the car, we're going to the smoke shop and we are getting the magic fucking wand. Now, if you guys remember the magic wand from my old DMT experience or how to smoke DMT, the best way in my own opinion, how to smoke DMT is with an oil burner or popularly known today as the meth pipe. Now, I believe that the oil burner has a bad condensate or a bad uh, reputation because it is used to freebase methamphetamine. It is the proper way to smoke DMT. So we go straight to the smoke shop. And uh, it was funny. Uh, before we went, um, she, somebody had made like these like custom like acrylic like uh, earrings that were mushrooms. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to put these on. Uh. And uh, we go into the smoke shop and uh, I'm wearing earrings. And the dude is obviously a very proud member of the LGBTQ community. And he was like, man, God, I love your earrings. I was like, thanks, bro. It's pretty lit. Uh, can I get a meth pipe? <laughs> I was like, yeah, let me get an oil burning. He's like, oh, you guys are getting into that tonight, huh? And I was like, actually, uh." We're not smoking meth out of this. We're smoking DMT. And he just like looked at me. He's like, what's that? I was like, oh, one day you'll know. And then uh, we left. So then I now play shaman for her and like light her up, you know, bless her up. And she has a wild experience. You know, maybe one day I'll get her on here to, to share her experience. But that was her journey. And uh, 
she came out of it. I was like, all right, cool. And I packed me a fat motherfucker. We're all sitting in this bed. Or me and her were sitting in this bed. It was just us. And I put on Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin, dude. Mm, yeah, dude. And I'm fucking nervous, bro. Like, I haven't smoked DMT in a long time. I've avoided psychedelic drugs for a long time. Just because the past year, year and a half has been the wildest fucking time of my life, man. If you know, you know, but, uh, you know, like I wasn't playing in the psychedelic ballpark because of some fucked up shit, man. Like I, I knew the worst thing I could do was to take psychedelics. I have to figure out the weird path that I was on naturally before I even try to turn to psychedelics for advice. Like I've done that in the past where I'm like in a very bad fucking position or a bad state of mind. And I turned to psychedelics for the answer. I knew dead in my soul, that's not the way to do this. But of course I stepped up to play to smoke DMT, which is very ironic being that I'm like, I don't want to do psychedelics. So uh, fuck T-ball, fuck little league, put me in the major leagues when I go back and smoke DMT. But I'm nervous, put on fucking stairway to heaven. Do -do 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 I started smoking, dude, the first hit, immediately, it was like, God went, <laughs> boom, like, and I just remember, like, I remember, like, everything, like, solidifying and becoming, like, almost AI, and I look at her, and she's just, like, she's got this, like, like, look in her face, but she's watching me do it, but I can tell she doesn't want to, like, keep her eyes watching me, so she'll, like, she'll watch me, and when I look at her, she'll, like, oh, shit, oh. Yeah, just do your thing. I don't even remember if I got two or three hits in when all of a sudden, like, I remember, like, pull it, like, oh, I was like, here we go, bitch. We, we got lift off. I'm about to do the fucking uh, Kessel Run in fucking 22 parsecs, dude. Zoom! Off to hyperspace. But I remember, like, holding on, like, grabbing her forearm. And, like, I remember, like, holding on to her forearm and, like, being, like, like grounded with it but the thing was is i can't be grounded i have to let go and the one whoever it is that lies in the realm of dmt said let go and i was i was like uh 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 and it was like it's okay we'll do it for you and i felt i legitimately felt her forearm disappear in my hand and i was like like it felt like i was reaching around like where'd you go Where'd you go? And they're like, oh, don't worry about that. We'll take care of that too. And I just lost all feeling in my hands. It grew like fucking Neo when he touched the fucking mirror in the Matrix. Dude, and just And I like come to, dude, and there's like, I'm just You can fly, you can fly, you can fly. And there's all these mandalic geometric patterns folding in front of me and they're just forming what looks like legitimately a spongebob jellyfish like you know fucking you know the fucking jellyfish at rave in spongebob's house like it looks like legitimately like one of those except if you poured ayahuasca on top of the jellyfish it was all covered in like fractals and like sacred geometry and like hieroglyphics from an alien world and these tentacles like kept coming up and like producing orbs of light yellow purple green blue magenta and all this shit and it was just i don't know if it was like showing me the rainbow and telling me i'm gay <laughs> but every time it would like hand me these orbs of light it was like it was nourishing my soul it was nourishing my soul and then it was like uh, it's doing all these things with their tentacles or whatever you want to call it and the embodiment the mothership of this being whatever it may be whatever these phalanges are connected to um it's all changing. Like it's making faces. It's making faces of people I know. It's making faces of people I hate. It's making faces of people I've helped, people who have helped me and all this shit. So then it like rests in front of me and these tentacles now begin to create mushrooms. And I'm watching the life cycle of a mushroom 
of multiple mushrooms from these tentacles play out in front of my face. I'm watching them grow, I'm watching them release spores, I'm watching them wither, I'm watching them die, and I'm watching the new ones grow. And um, it's, it's incredible, like I'm feeling it. I'm feeling, I'm, I'm gaining the knowledge of, of a fungi. Like I'm, I'm in, like, I'm just experiencing it. I'm experiencing life and death through multiple bodies, multiple times, over and over and over. And it's filled with like joy to be alive. It's uh, filled with the stress of, of growing and it, it deals with the release of death. And each time was was extraordinary because it was a, a wave of emotions of, of happiness and, and fear. I didn't understand what this meant, but what I got out of it was that we die multiple times in life. You know, there's, there's so many beginnings and endings that we have. You have to embrace it, you know? with my pops dying, with Dylan dying, with me, you know, with the situation with my second born son and everything like, you have to embrace everything that comes as much as you're afraid of it, as much as you're excited for it, as much as everything is, man. I don't, because we live multiple lives, who knows beyond the, you know, what we know as existence, but while we're here, it's preparing us for multiple chapters of existence. I used to be a hardcore kid running in circle pits, jumping on people and being an angry ass, you know, dude. And then in the span of 12 months, man, I was loving everybody, exploring my mind with psychedelics, dude. Like that part of me once died and I grew into something new, something that changed my life forever. And I think we lose sight of that, you know, with everything going on, because everything happens so slowly for us. It's, it's not that we look at it on like a spectrum, as I did in the psychedelic experience. But when you look at it that way, you have to understand that these negative feelings or these negative emotions that we all fucking have, they're only temporary. And they're there because it hurts to plant a seed. But when that seed grows, man, it grows into one of the most beautiful flowers you ever fucking see. And that's why I love psychedelic drugs, my friends. Thank you guys so much for fucking watching. Once again, thank you guys so much for your patience, your support, your appreciation, your love throughout the years. It means the absolute fucking world to me. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Like I said, welcome to the res is coming, man. I got it. I got it working, but uh, I'm back, motherfucker. And if you ever need to find me, all you got to do is jump down the rabbit hole. Take a left at the land of Oz. From there, it's second star to the right and straight on till morning. You'll find yourself in that state of consciousness before you fall asleep and start dreaming. Right there, my friends. That's where I will always love you. And that is where I will always be waiting. I am forever your Uncle Icarus. I love you guys. I love you. Rest in peace to my pops. That hawk flying those fucking western, southwestern skies looking over me. I love you, Dad. And God rest your soul to my brother motherfucking Dylan Porter. Greatest guy I ever fucking met, man. Say it with me, y'all. Peace, love. And smoke DMT.